Subcapital femoral epiphysis commonly presents in adolescent boys. It often presents as insidious onset of either hip or knee pain, but can present as sudden acute pain in either the hip or the knee. Diagnosis of ischemia requires a thorough physical examination of the affected extremity, as well as plain radiographs, including AP and frog bone of the pelvis. Oftentimes, no further imaging is required to diagnose ischemia. Once the diagnosis of a skiffy is made, surgical intervention is indicated. Patients should be placed on either crutches or using the use of a wheelchair and should be made non-weight bearing. There are several surgical techniques that are available for, fixing, for operative intervention of a subcapital femoral pyxis. This video will focus on the use of a fracture table and biplanar image intensifier. Slip capital femoral epiphysis is a common cause of adolescent hip pain. It results in a disruption of the anatomic relationship of the femoral head and proximal femoral physis. While the term slipped epiphysis implies movement of the epiphysis itself, we believe that this is somewhat misleading as the proximal femoral neck actually rotates away from the epiphysis which remains well seated within the acetabulum. Skiffy may be viewed as a failure of a weakened physis in response to increased physiologic loading. This is analogous to a Salter-Harris type 1 physeal injury. The exact etiology of Skiffy is unknown, but both biochemical and biomechanical factors likely play a role. These factors include obesity, femoral retroversion, increased physeal obliquity, puberty, and endocrinopathies such as hypothyroidism and hypogonadism. Following unilateral presentation, 10 to 20 percent will develop skiffy in the contralateral hip, generally within 18 months of the initial presentation. Skiffy should be included in the differential of any 10 to 15 year old presenting with hip, groin, or knee pain. The history should elucidate the chronicity and stability of the slip. If a patient is outside the expected age range, consider if the patient has systemic disorders such as endocrinopathies that would contribute to this. On physical exam, the patient's gait is assessed. Determine if a limp or an external foot progression angle is present. As you can see on the exam demonstrated on the right, the affected leg is shortened and externally rotated. Obligate external rotation of the leg with passive hip flexion is a hallmark of skiffy. Slips are considered to be unstable when weight bearing is not possible, even with crutches. Bilateral hip imaging should be reviewed. The femoral epiphysis is in a posterior inferior position relative to the femoral neck. On the right, Klein's line can be seen drawn on the superior lateral border of the femoral neck. On the left hip, it intersects the epiphysis. However, on the right side of Skiffy, Klein's line passes lateral to the epiphysis. Blurring of the proximal femoral metaphysis is known as the Blanche sign of steel, which represents overlapping double density of the metaphysis and posterior displaced epiphysis. The Southwick angle can be used to classify the severity of Skiffy. This is measured by comparing the difference in the femoral epiphyseal shaft angle of both hips on the frog leg lateral radiograph. The degree of Skiffy can also be graded based on the percentage of slip. In cases where the diagnosis is not elucidated by clinical exam and plain radiographs, advanced imaging such as MRI and bone scan may be helpful to identify the early Skiffy.